Hi folks, welcome to One More Story. I'm your host, George Walters. You know, over the years I've met a lot of interesting people, each with their unique story to tell. That's the wonderful thing about being a writer. I can be listening to someone share their experiences, and suddenly a story starts to form in my mind. I like to think of this as a gift, but you know, sometimes it feels more like a burden. Reason being that once a story begins to take shape, it won't leave me alone until I write it down. Although these days it's usually typed on a computer. You know what I mean. Anyway, today I'm excited to share a story that has stayed with me for a long time. I've told it many times, and each time it brings out different feelings in me. For years I wondered about those emotions, but now I know they're a sign that the story doesn't need any changes. So with that, grab yourself a coffee, sit back, and enjoy as I take you on a journey down memory lane. And I hope you enjoy The Salesman. Going to town didn't happen that often on our farm, the reason being the trip was around five miles or so. Along with our days being so loaded down with work, well, we just plain didn't have the time. But I should mention that we did go when we were truly in need of something. I remember one day Laura was sitting on the front porch watching Reg work up the vegetable garden, which was situated just off to the one side of a house. Laura was chatting to Reg while he worked, keeping him company. Now don't get me wrong, Laura did her share of the work, as she had just finished off helping with the milking, making breakfast, and had three pies and a pot roast on the go in the oven. It was just that at that moment she was hot and tired and figured she would get a breath of fresh air. Now, who could that be, Laura said, looking down the laneway? Looks like one of those road salesmen. Seems to me we've been having our share of them lately. Well, dear, they got to make a living, too, so we can't be too hard on the feller. Now, you just sit there and let me do the negotiating, as if there's one thing I'm darn good at, and, well, this is it. <laughs> and Laura, well, she just shook her head, sat back, and watched the feller make his way up to the house. The wagon he had was covered with canvas, and inside it was chock full of all kinds of things, from flour to magazines, pumps, shovel, and axe handles, you name it. Behind it, he was pulling two calves and an old mule. What can we do for you, Reds asked, getting up from the garden and walking toward the wagon. More so, what can I do for you, he replied. I'm sure that a family of your caliber would be in need of some quality items. Am I correct? Am I thinking, my good man? Well, that depends, said Red. As you well know, these are hard times and money is scarce. Yes, sir, I realize that. But one has to remember that I can save you money by not having to go to town. Now take pepper, salt, and sugar. I'm sure you're in need of them. And I can and I can let you have them for much less than what they sell in the store. And what would that mean, Red Jan? Sir, I could let you have a ten pound bag of sugar for a dollar, pepper and salt for both the same price. Hmm, said Reds. That sounds like a fair price. Laura listened to what was taking place and spoke up and said, Fair price? I can get it for half of that in town. Who are you trying to fool? It won't be us, that's for darn sure. At any rate, here's what we need. But Laura, dear, said Reds, I was just about... Don't Laura, dear me, just let me alone here as I know exactly what we are needed for. And looking at the salesman, she said, Write this down as I'm only going to say it once. Yes, ma'am. And with that, he took out a pan and pencil. Well, said Laura, we need flour, two axe handles, four good wood milking pails, a new pump for a well, hinges for a fence over there, as you can see it hanging. My husband here, as energetic as he is, says that's the reason why it hasn't been fixed. Also, uh, I'm in need of some clothes pins and a good deep pot for cooking, as mine has a hole in it, and I have about patched it for the last time. I looked over at Laura, and she knew exactly what I was thinking. Oh, and some candy sticks for the boy here, say around ten or so, all different colors. He don't get them too often. Sure made me happy, let me tell you. That is a good order, ma'am, and I am very grateful for your business. It'll only take me a few minutes here to figure out the cost, and I will write the bill up for you. I only take cash, you realize that, right? 
Cash, Laura said. Don't you know that we farmers work from daylight to dark just to make ends meet? Money doesn't grow on trees, you know, at least not around here. Well, said the salesman, looks like we got a bit of a dilemma here, but I'm sure we can come up with something. Looking over at the two geese, he said, maybe we can make a trade. Laura, well, right away, she spotted him looking at the geese. Thing was, we never knew where them two darn geese came from. They happened in on their own one day while we were feeding the chickens and kind of made themselves at home. Laura had said they were too greasy to eat, and for most parts, they were just left alone. Sir, I see you're interested in my two geese. We might be able to make a bit of a trade for them. It depends, though, if you're willing to give me what I want for them. And what would that be, ma'am? Well, that order that I just told you about for starters. Ma'am, you have to understand that the things you ordered are worth much, much more than them two geese. Fine geese they are, but still, you can't expect me to make a deal of that sort. Well, Laura spoke up with a twinkle in her eye. Sir, them are two fine geese. Just look at how nice and plump they are. Also, you're not just getting two fine geese, my friend. You're going to be getting many more, as there is one, one male and one female, and the females in the family way. Usually they have six or so young ones. Now, if you put that all together, you got, let's say, eight, which is worth much more than the things I asked you for. You have to understand that we have a lot of money and time invested in them, too, with a feed and all. Actually, I never considered partnering with them, as they were the finest in the country. Reg and I, well, we scratched our heads and looked at the two old geese. I then whispered to Reg, gosh, Reg, I didn't know they were so valuable. Shush now, said Red. Beats me, I thought to myself. Well, ma'am, I never realized that she was in the family way. I, I would have to take your word on that. But if what you say is true, well, then I guess you got yourself a deal. Good, said Laura. Red, you and George go and catch them two geese and put them in a crate for the fella. After the salesman left, I asked Laura, Don't those geese lay eggs like chickens? I can't see how she can be in the family way. You're just, you just pulled one over on that feller, didn't you? <laughs> well, for one thing, I would never do such a thing, as I have seen the one male making advances toward the female for the past few days now. So I kind of figured we would soon be seeing a few young ones running around here. And the thing is, we don't need any more critters running around here that aren't worth their weight. So I figured we should just get rid of them. Also, I'm not sure where they came from to begin with. Does that mean we sold something that wasn't ours? No, it doesn't, as there is no one I know of in these parts that owns geese, and we have been feeding them for the past three months now or better. So I reckon we can honestly say they were, well, sort of ours. I looked over at Red, and he just shrugged his shoulders. Can't argue with that, dear, Red said. But I want you to know I almost had that fellow right where I wanted him and could have gotten a good deal on them things myself without your help. Sure you could have, and we would have been without money for the rest of the summer. Reg, well, he just lowered his head, knowing fully well Laura was right, and a lot better at getting things from folks than he was. At the supper table that night, Red said, You know, Laura, the next time that salesman happens by, maybe you could trade him that mangy old dog that keeps coming around here for a new pair of harnesses for the Clydesdales. With that, the rest of the night was filled with laughs, and, well, life moved forward. I often wondered how long it took for that road salesman to get his money back from them two old geese. But knowing them salesmen back then, I never had any doubts he would do just that. Well, that's it for today, folks. I hope this story has stirred up some thoughts and feelings for you. Just like Laura reminded us that cash and life struggles are real, and, under and understanding them can bring us closer together. And if you enjoyed the story, don't forget to subscribe unless you want to miss out on the many more stories that I'll be sharing here on my channel in the coming weeks. Until the next time, keep your heart open and your stories alive.